A successful spiritual practice begins with Simran of God's names and meditation. Today on the Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. I begin with a reading from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, one of the most amazing verses to be found in the Gnostic Gospel of Mary Magdalene. I left the world with the aid of another world. A design was erased by virtue of a higher design. Henceforth I travel toward repose, where time rests in the eternity of time. I go now into silence. Having said all this, Mary became silent, for it was in silence that the teacher spoke to her. Gospel of Mary Magdalene Mystic poetry to begin today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast, this time from the canonical Gnostic prayer book of the Mandaeans, one of the most amazing passages to be found in the Mandaean scriptures. In the name of the great life, sublime light, be praised. This is titled, The Illuminator of the Worlds of Light. From the place of light I came forth, from you, bright habitation. I come to touch hearts, to measure and try all minds to see in whose heart I dwell. Whoever thinks of me, of him I think. Whoever calls my name, his name I will call. Whoever prays my prayer from the earth, his prayer I will offer from the place of light. I came and found the truthful and believing hearts. When I was not dwelling among them, yet my name was on their lips. I took them and guided them up to the world of light. I became the illuminator of the worlds of light. I became a king to the Nazareans who receive praise and stability through my name. And by my name they ascend to the place of the light. As for the elect chosen righteous who put me on as a garment, Their eyes were filled with light, and Manda Dahaya, knowledge of life, was established in their hearts. This time, mystic poetry from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures. O siblings of destiny, become Gurumukh, become true faithful disciples and meditate on the name of the Lord. The treasure of Nam abides forever within the mind, and one's place of rest is found in the mansion of the Lord's presence. Meditate on the name, worship the name, and through the name you shall be absorbed in intuitive peace and poise. O my mind, drink in the sublime essence of the Lord, and your thirst shall be quenched. O Nanak, meditate on God, O siblings of destiny, and your mind and body shall be cool and calm. Within my heart I meditate on God. Meditating on the Lord, no obstacles will block your way. By the Master's grace, meditate on God. This reading is also from the Adi Granth, but our verses turned into song lyrics by Singh Kar on her song, Mender of Hearts. So this is both lyrics to Mender of Hearts and verses from the Sikh scriptures, the Adi Granth. You are the mender, the mender of hearts. You are the sustainer of all. 
You are the mender of the wounds of life. You are the sustainer of all. In your heart you care for everyone, within all hearts in everyone. In your heart you care for everyone, within all hearts, within all hearts. You're there. O oh, my mind, meditate forever on the one. You are the mender of the wounds of life. You are the sustainer of all. So remember him who alone will carry you, who alone will carry you to your destination. Meditate forever on the one, O oh, my mind. Meditate forever on the one, mender of hearts. the amount of time to devote to meditation and the effects of various amounts of time. Degrees of ascension according to the masters. For a recent Sant Satsang podcast, I gathered together materials from various masters, mystics, and scriptures addressing the question of how much time to spend in meditation. As it is a key make-or-break sort of issue for those of us mystic explorers of inner space, the kingdom of the heavens, or higher planes of consciousness. Here are a couple of quintessential passages on this subject of how much time we should devote to the timeless. In The Night is a Jungle, Sant Kripal Singh wrote, All masters tell the devotees to do their simran and bhajan. Hazur used to say, You people give one-tenth of your earnings, so you should also give one-tenth of your time. One-tenth of the day is two and a half hours. Some sit for merely five minutes, some for a half an hour, and many not at all. Others sit when the occasion fits their mood. If the connection which is given at initiation is not increased, what happens? The attention remains outward and does not withdraw and invert. A person may sit hours on end and others may think he is devoted, a devoted meditator, but inside he sees nothing. Awake! This is the time to understand what is what. The masters come, lift up their hands, and shout to the world, Do your meditation, for without it you cannot be free. This is from Santji Ajeb Singh. You have to withdraw the currents of the spirit from the entire body and to concentrate them at the eye center. Then a starry sky will burst upon your gaze. Cross that, penetrate the sun and the moon, detach yourself from this body, and behold the refulgent form of the master within. You are now in a position to converse with him. He will answer all your questions and will ultimately take you to Sach Khand. Regularity and punctuality in meditation should be adopted by every student of this science. Keep sitting in meditation, even if you fail to achieve concentration. This is the remedy for all your ills. Ceaseless effort will be crowned with success, if not today, a few days later, from the writings of Ajeb Singh or Santji. On the grace of the masters and various amounts of time, Baba Ram Singh writes, For those who have not meditated but have not lost faith in the master, and they have been listening to satsang, even for such people, the masters come at the time of their death. However, the bliss and enjoyment and happiness 
which a devotee who is meditating regularly enjoys, is not as much enjoyed by these people because they have not meditated, have not redeemed their karmas, and are not in a position to enjoy and get the benefit of that bliss as much. However, masters are very graceful and they take the soul and then keep the soul in the Sahasdal Kanwal. Also, the devotees who may not have meditated for two and a half hours but have been meditating regularly, even for a shorter period of time, say an hour or so, and they have love and affection and devotion for the master, the master comes to take them also. And he keeps them in Parbrahm and the pod, the place of liberation, where the devotees love their masters and there are affection and devotion for the master and there is no attachment for any worldly matters and no further desires. The master takes such souls and even takes them straight to Sach Khand. It is only the love of worldly things, worldly desires, which stop the soul from going all the way to Sach Khand, the true eternal spiritual realm. So then they have to wait at the plains in between and complete their devotion. Therefore, with a lot of grace, we have got the human form the human life, and this is the door of liberation. It is in this life form that we have the chance of getting liberated and getting out of the clutches of Kal and the ocean of life. So we should therefore withdraw from our worldly desires and get our love and affection focused at the feet of the Master and get liberated in this life and go back to our true home. A passage from Baba Ram Singh. Also from Baba Ram Singh, when we do regularly our meditation, and if we have some problem sometimes and we face some difficulties, then when we sit for meditation, direction is given inside by the masters. Simran, the repetition of sacred names of God, the prayer of the name. The next segment of today's Satsang podcast, titled A Successful Spiritual Practice, begins with Simran of God's Names and Meditation. This is from Philosophy of the Masters by Samwan Singh and Kripal Singh. What is Simran and how should it be done? To remember the Lord with every breath of our life is known as Simran. Simran is practiced with the ultimate aim of attaining communion with God. Simran should be done in accordance with the instructions of a master whose own soul has merged in God. Such Simran will result in the greatest good because it makes use of thought transference, master to disciple which removes all obstacles that confront us in our transport to the upper regions. Thus the soul receives personal and constant guidance on the difficult path leading to the upper spiritual regions. Simran should be done by sitting in a comfortable posture, by concentrating the attention at the center between the two eyebrows, the third eye center, and by lovingly and devotedly repeating the holy names with the tongue of the soul. By doing this, the wavering mind becomes steady and one is able to achieve concentration. Simran, of course, as a spiritual technique, can also be done at other times besides during meditation, while waiting, walking, or in other conditions. Nor is it necessary to neglect the worldly duties for this purpose. On the contrary, one should earn one's own living. One should keep one's mind and 
body unperturbed in order to practice Simran as instructed by the Master. The hearing power and the seeing power of the soul should also be developed. This kind of Simran, even for a moment, is far more efficacious than Simran of various other types, even if done for ages. Just pausing to comment here. Uh, other kinds of Simran that's referring to vocal Simran or Simran done with rosary beads or in connection with outer rites and rituals, that sort of thing. He is saying, Huzur Baba Sawan saying, is saying that mental Simran, mana's job, sacred names of God that are chanted or repeated in the mind, a mental repetition or mana's job is far more beneficial than other kinds of Simran. Although, as we will see, there is a passage also in Gurmat Siddhat which talks about vocally repeating the five names. But just for a few minutes, and then it's, for the most part, described as a mental repetition. But one can at first, if one is having some difficulty in concentrating, can they can repeat the names out loud briefly. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Back to the reading from Gurmat Siddhat, the philosophy of the masters. Object of Simran. The object of Simran is to have communion with God. The soul alone can realize him. It is not possible for the mind, the senses, or the intellect to know God. But as long as the soul is active in all parts of the body and in the objects outside, it cannot know the Lord. By doing Simran according to the Master's instructions, we withdraw our attention. We withdraw our attention from the worldly objects, thus withdrawing mind and soul currents from every pore of the body bringing them to the eye center and concentrating them there. In this manner, the mind and the soul are concentrated at the headquarters of the mind and the soul in the body, and the body becomes dead to the world. When this happens, then a person has conquered death while living. When the practice is properly done and one's inner eye opens, then that individual becomes aware of eternal consciousness. Simran is a ladder which takes us to the higher regions where we may have communion with God. Whoever finds pleasure in doing Simran, as instructed by the Master, will one day assume or merge into the form of God Himself. It is for this reason that all saints have preached and taught the proper method of doing Simran within. This is from Baba Ram Singh Ji. By doing Simran, when there is this love between the soul and God Almighty, each cell of our body, each drop of our blood and flesh, all of them get completely soaked in this love. And that is how the love emanates from each and every cell of the body. Do the Simran, aiming your attention within like an arrow at its target. Then the door of Shabbat, the sound current, will burst open. That last part, that last sentence, is a quote from Baba Somanath. Excerpts from Sant Kripal Singh in The Way of the Saints, Chapter 4, The Seat of Simran. The divine ground of being of which Simran should be done is the center between the two eyebrows called variously the third eye. Tishra Til or Shiv Netra. It is the gateway leading to the subtle planes. In the state of wakefulness it is the seat of the spirit or psyche and it is located above the six physical ganglions or chakras. We have to transcend both the astral and causal planes above the physical plane. The yogis, step by step, cross over the six physical centers until they finally 
and completely traverse and go over the physical plane. Instead of descending down into the lower ganglions or chakras and then going back up by piercing them through in the upper journey, it would be easier and better by far if one were to commence the journey right ahead from the seat of the soul in the wakeful state which is at the back of the two eyes, the third eye center. The easiest way to withdraw the spirit from the body is to its own seat by means of some mental simran as may be enjoined by the master soul. This is from the book Love's Last Madness, Poems on a Spiritual Path by Darshan Singh. Translated from the Urdu by Barry Lerner and Harbans Singh Bedi. Very near your heart are seekers of your vision. Those who look at the surface are exiled from the Beloved's light. What can I say of the grace he showers on me within? O oh, Darshan, the moment I close my eyes, the Beloved's light begins. He bears a thousand names, call on him by any. Summon him to the assembly of your thoughts and adore him. Offer him a seat in the innermost chamber of your heart and burnish his image. Suffuse your lifeblood with his name and fix him in your soul. You surely will meet him. Just let your soul soar. He is close to you. Just call for him. Helpful guidance on Simran practice, the repetition of the names. This is from Gurmat Siddhat, The Philosophy of the Masters, from a section on remembrance or repetition, Simran. Simran, the repetition of various sacred names of God. philosophy of the masters. Simran bestows happiness, peace, and bliss and leads us to a state of superconsciousness. The repetition of any name or names of God is called Simran. Through it, an extraordinary current of consciousness enters the body. Repetition should be done with one pointed attention and in due course a stage is reached when repetition ceases and the form contemplated upon manifests itself. This is the culmination point of repetition. Repetition and contemplation can be done both separately and simultaneously. Just pausing here, one may start by repeating the names, the sacred name or names, and then one starts seeing light and one can continue repeating this, the names or, or the sacred name as one is seeing the inner light. You can do both the Simran and seeing the inner light meditation at the same time. Or you can do Simran, just Simran by itself. Either way. Philosophy of the Masters, Gurmat Siddhat. Simran should not be done in haste. It should be done slowly and with love and devotion, the names being repeated clearly and correctly. To do it in haste is to regard it as an unwanted task or to go through it merely as a routine, leading nowhere. If the mind becomes lazy while doing Simran or the attention turns towards sense pleasures, one should repeat the names audibly for 10 or 15 minutes so that the mind's attention reverts to the proper place. The results of repetition will be in direct proportion to the love and faith brought to bear upon it. Carry out the Simran of the Lord with love and faith, 
His names have a great power. When done with faith, one feels intoxicated with joy, with the result that he forgets his body and himself and is aware of the presence of the Lord. How potent and blissful is the name of God, for it creates in the devotee a fast-flowing current of bliss, peace, and soul force, and he gets truly blessed. To do Simran, it is not necessary to give up the world and its tasks, carry on your duties, and still keep your attention fixed in Simran. If you wish to be filled with the grace of God, then you should banish all else from your mind, leave everything else aside, and cherish the name of the Lord alone in your heart. As soon as you empty your mind of all thoughts by means of Simran, you will find the way to the Lord's mansion. Excerpted from Philosophy of the Masters, which is now mostly online these days at several PDF file books, Gurmat Siddhant, also called Philosophy of the Masters. Just commenting briefly on repeating names out loud. For some of you, that may sound like a new thing that you may not have heard masters talk about before. One can repeat the names out loud, at least for a few minutes, when you're alone, in private, and no one else is overhearing, because the name or names in any tradition are kept secret or private. In the case of Sawan Singh and Kripal Singh, this is referring to the five names or the Panch Nam. One can briefly, if necessary, repeat the names out loud if one will not be overheard. And then, once concentration is established, revert to mental repetition, or mana's job, the mental repetition of the five names or your sacred name, your mantra words, your sacred names of God. Mostly a mental repetition, but you can, according to the masters, repeat the names when you're trying to get established, when you're trying to focus, if you're having a tough time focusing. You can repeat the names out loud for 10 or 15 minutes up to that time before switching to a mental repetition. Gurmat Siddhat, Philosophy of the Masters. Whoever finds pleasure in doing Simran as instructed by the Master will one day assume or merge into the form of God Himself, Azur Baba Sawan Singh. Simran, or constant remembrance of God, is a tonic for the soul. It makes the will grow stronger from day to day. A quote from Kripal Singh. Simran, the repetition and remembrance of God by the sacred name repetition, the sacred names of God being repeated. Santji Ajayb Singh, when Simran is properly done for some time, a state of divine intoxication comes upon the spirit, and blessed calmness is experienced. So just to summarize, Simran, the repetition of a sacred name or names of God, whatever your spiritual master gives you at the time of initiation for sacred names, this is done as the first step, the beginning of meditation practice. But Simran is also a technique that you can do whenever you can throughout the day. Kabir was a weaver, and as he did his weaving, he repeated his sacred name and became known as Kabir, the weaver of God's name. So, whenever you can, repeat your, sec- your sacred name, your Simran words, you know, as you go about your day. In my case, I take Simran breaks from time to time. Just take a few minutes and uh, 
Have a Simran break. It's very wonderful. It's a chance to recenter. It's very refreshing. Our final segment today, in celebration of the Master, initiation, and this wonderful path of the Masters, this path of the saints and mystics. Finding the living Master, the Sant Sat Guru, and being initiated by him into the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens. This is not a poem dedicated to celebrating an initiation by just anyone, a mahant, a caretaker, a priest somewhere of some temple. This is a celebration of initiation that is given by a living Sant Sat Guru, a living master. Maharishi Mehi's hymn to his Sat Guru. Great praise to Sat Guru Devi Sahib. This world is like a dark, terrifying well. The center of the body is full of darkness. Lying amidst darkness is the individual self, forgetting its home and true self, it's variously affected or afflicted. In absence of the Satguru, the individual self is extremely tortured. There is no one except the Satguru who will be able to solve this puzzle and clear away the deep darkness and help the individual self to cross this ocean-like world of samsara and reach the true home where this absolute happiness dwells. The Satguru exhorts all present in a clear voice that the way to one's own true home is entirely different from the external world. That path is neither in water nor among the stones nor in the universe. It is located within the body of the individual self. Maharishi Mehi Paramahan says that Baba Devi Sahib is a real Satguru. One wishing to reach one's home should seek the Satguru's shelter. That will help pursue the pathway leading to one's home. Maharishi Mehi Padavali Hymn number 32 celebrating his encounter with Baba Devi Sahib of Muradabad, a Sant Sat Guru, and being initiated by a living master, a Sant Sat Guru. This seed of initiation, once planted, is permanent on this living path of the Masters. Baba Ram Singh, when we do regularly our meditation, and if we have some problems sometimes and we face some difficulties, then when we sit for meditation, direction is given inside by the Masters. Therefore, you should have love and affection for the Master, and you should do your meditation and Simran daily and contemplate on the form of the Master. This life has been given by God Almighty for devotion and for salvation in this lifetime. So, we should follow the instructions of the Master and do our devotion with love and affection. After Swamiji Maharaj, the floodgates of initiation opened up and many people would be able to get the initiation because once initiated, the seed of that initiation will always remain planted, even if it may take a long time to fructify. So this seed of initiation, once planted, is permanent. It never gets destroyed, and sooner or later, it fructifies. Sooner or later, the devotee goes to Sachkhand. 
The masters teach us to do Simran because by doing Simran and contemplating within, gradually but surely our attachments and our pull toward these illusory outwardly matters definitely is reduced. And over a period of time, we start progressing within. Sayings from Baba Ram Singh. Mystic Poetry concluding today's Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. Visit my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. These are verses from Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, India. Saints show us the path of sound and light. They still the mind and raise it to the skies within. The soul gets concentrated at the door and is in bliss. Ascending the celestial skies, she is in sight of Gigan, the mystic inner sky of the second stage. The fortunate soul gets set out on its journey along with the divine melody. Listening to this celestial music day by day, she becomes detached. You are the mender, the mender of hearts. Once again, the Sikh scriptures paraphrased by Singkar in her wonderful song on the Crimson series, I believe, one of the volumes of the Crimson series called Mender of Hearts. Oh, my mind, meditate forever on the one. You are the mender of the wounds of life. You are the sustainer of all. So remember him who alone will carry you, who alone will carry you to your destination. Meditate forever on the one. Oh, my mind, meditate forever on the one.